Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Aglet Week webinar. Um, we waited a couple of minutes to catch folks who were coming in a bit late, but I think we're going to get started now. This is going to be recorded, so um, you will be able to share with friends afterwards. So let's just get into it. Um, I am so happy to welcome Abby Nelson and Missy Axelrod from the Northeast Farming Association of Vermont, also called NOFA Vermont. They have been working with Aglet Week for a couple of years now. And last year, if you'll remember, Cass worked with them on Aglet Week when the theme was the Abenaki um, food and farming and Vermont's cultural food and farming heritage. So this year the theme is cooking in the library. So we're really excited about this one. So we have two lovely ladies here with us today. Uh, we have Abby Nelson, who is um, the education director at NOFA Vermont. And she was also the program director of Vermont Food Education Every Day. Uh, which is part of the Farm to School project. And we have Missy, who has been, sorry, I didn't, I didn't practice my elevator speech for you guys here. Um, she is a Farm to Community mentor with NOFA Vermont and is, well, you just go to schools a bunch and teach kids straight on about farming and food stuff, which is pretty cool. So they're going to talk, they're going to also introduce themselves more and better. <laughs> and they're going to talk about Aglet Week and then a related but not necessarily mashed together program called Simple Suppers. So I'm going to hand it over to these ladies now. Okay. Can we have the first slide? Yeah, absolutely. So. Thank you. Okay. So, Abby Nelson uh, with NOFA Vermont, and uh, NOFA Vermont stands for the Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont, and we not only promote organic practices in farming and sustainable practices, but our aim is to build an economically viable, ecologically sound, and socially just Vermont agricultural system benefiting everyone. So, Ag Literacy Week's been going on for 10 years, and we developed it with the Agency of Ag, Food, and Markets, and then later, in uh, a couple of years later, Department of Libraries joined us because it's Agricultural Literacy Week, and we thought, why not um, really get the literacy part in there? So it's always been the third week of November, and folks say, well, that seems odd. It's the week before Thanksgiving, but exactly. <laughs> it's the week before Thanksgiving. And um, it's a great time to appreciate the harvest uh, here in Vermont. And it's a great time to sort of kick off the um, celebrations and seasons that are coming. This year in particular, so yes, um, as uh, Jennifer said, it's cooking in the library, which uh, was um, a great idea because we're doing a lot of cooking with kids um, uh, other than in libraries, and we thought we'd meet the two together. And in that, um, we're offering a couple of different ways of celebrating. So Ag Literacy Week is November 18th to 24th. Oh, there's another. Hang on, we're going to another slide. Okay, well, 17 to 23 or 18 to 24, however you want to look at it, it's that week. And we will, um, through um, the Department of Libraries, sending everyone a poster which will say Ag Literacy Week. So if you do something related to agriculture or cooking in the libraries, that week you will have a poster prior to the week, of course, that will have an open spot that's essentially a post-it note where you can write your own activity. So, um, Missy's going to explain simple suppers, and that is another way that can either be celebrated during this week or any other time. And so we will get into that. Um, but basically, um, 
During Ag Literacy Week, we will be highlighting cooking in the library at four libraries across the state, and we're finalizing those libraries. And at each library, we will have a cookbook author who will um, bring some books to sign, and we'll talk about how did they get into cookbook writing, which is a whole different thing than just cooking. Um, and you know, what are they finding out there in the world around cooking? And what's this bit about cooking with kids? And so we will have various speakers, but the m one main event will be at the uh, Department of Libraries headquarters here in Barrie at the Vermont Historic Society, where we will have some guest speakers and kids cooking a snack for the participants. So that's the one event we absolutely know is happening and we're almost set on which cookbook author is coming. So that's on the 19th um, of November, and that's in the evening. And so we will keep the information flowing about when the other ones are going to be highlighted, the other three, and then also we'll have a stream of doing simple suppers. So take it away, Missy. Okay, so this is Missy Axelrod speaking. Um, I have been working with um, a series of libraries throughout the state over the last couple years doing simple suppers. So what is a simple supper? It is simple. <laughs> That's the idea, to make it simple and delicious and to bring the community together in the library where we can share food and agricultural literacy. Um, and what we do is, it's kind of a new way of doing a potluck. Everybody brings an ingredient and we actually get to cook it together. So it's something that's really great for all ages. Kids love it, adults love it. Um, we prepare it so that we know what the menu is gonna be and we use um, a program called Sign Up Genius where everybody signs up so that we don't have everybody bringing tomatoes because that would not be as yummy unless we, I mean it could be, but <laughs> the idea is to really create a meal. So everybody signs up, they bring the ingredients, and you can see in this picture that's on there right now, oh, there's a couple long tables with the red and white checkered tablecloths. Before it looks as nice as it does right now in that picture, before then it was covered in cutting boards, knives, and mostly raw vegetables. And everybody gathered around the table and started cutting up lettuce, cutting up carrots, cucumbers, there's peppers in that picture. Um, some people brought already cooked meat that we sliced up and basically made a really nice big salad bar. This was in the middle of summer, I think it was August. And then, so we had a salad bar and then we had um, some homemade baguettes that some community members mm -hmm. brought. Some people brought in some Vermont baguettes from the store. Um, I think for this dinner we had mozzarella and basil and tomatoes to make bruschetta. Um, and then for dessert, we had strawberry shortcake. Um, and so the shortcakes were already prepared and the strawberries came there raw and then we had some cans of whipped cream. So it was kind of a assembly your own dessert. So everybody was cooking around the table. Once everything was prepared, we clean off the table, make it look nice as a buffet and we get to enjoy the food together. Uh, next slide, please. So why, what, and I'll talk more details about that, of the how-to in a little bit, but why host a simple supper uh, at the library? What a weird place, huh? The idea is that you can do it inside or outside, depending on the space. You don't need a kitchen. We try to design the menu so you don't have to use a stove top because not many libraries have big kitchens. Um, but the idea is to bring the community together, bring in um, patrons that might not be patrons yet, but might end up signing up for a library card, um, bring in regular um, library patrons and have everybody come together. Typically people end up meeting a lot of new friends when they are standing around, cutting up vegetables, kids are learning how to use a knife. You can see in this picture, I actually have some kid safe knives, that white one that he's holding is, you can't cut yourself with it, so the kids are able to jump in and help. Um, and everybody's just laughing and having a good time. Not everybody helps prepare, so I'm just stand off and talk and get caught up, but probably about 80% of the people around the table. Um, and yeah, that idea is just to bring everybody together. Slide. So what is it like? Um, we were really lucky, we had a sunny day. If we didn't have a sunny day, we would have just moved the tables into the middle of one of the larger rooms 
in the library. And this is the Kimball Public Library in Randolph that's in this picture. And it's not huge. There's not huge open community rooms, but we're able to move a few chairs or tables and create that space inside if need be. Um, so it's just fun. It's simple. It's relaxing um, and delicious. Next slide. So I talked a little bit about how it benefits the library. It brings new people from the community that might not otherwise go to the library. Um, it brings somebody that has, is regular at the library, brings uh, kids of all ages, older people of all ages, um, just a nice mixture of people. So sounds fun and delicious, but what does it take to make this happen? I will let you know. Next slide. Um, one, it takes a farmer because without our farmers, we wouldn't have the yummy food. So we always try to invite a local farmer to come and be a part of the event. They typically bring some food to share with everybody. Maybe some of the other community members will bring food from their that farm to celebrate. And the idea is to learn a little bit about what's going on in the community and the community farms so that we have that connection and we know our farmers. Um, and it's a really great way for them to celebrate and also share their knowledge and share a little bit about what they have available for the community to enjoy. Um, so if you're interested in hosting, um, not yet. Oh. Um, so if you're interested in hosting one, there uh, is a sign-up sheet that you can go ahead and um, sign up your library, but it's really going to be up to you to execute it, but I'm here for support. So on this page right now is my email and my phone number, and then on the bottom is a link that you can open up that has a bunch of documents to help you walk through everything. So the first document on the very left is a list of um, what do you need to make this happen. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can ask through Sign Up Genius for community members to bring cutting boards and knives and soup bowls and tablecloths and that way you don't have to worry about it or you can um, procure all of that yourself and leave it in the library and have it as part of a lending library or maybe you have it from home and you want to bring it from home. You can really go either direction but this is just a suggested list of items that you're going to need to make this possible for everybody to cook together. So we're looking at cutting boards, knives, small bowls for putting the cut vegetables in, soup bowl. Um, if you're doing a late fall or winter one, I like doing stone soup. And most libraries don't have stove tops, so you can plug in an Instapot, which mm -hmm. cooks really fast. Uh, the soup could be ready in about 30 minutes. Um, go to the next page. Oh. Um, can you pull up another tab? Oh, okay. Sorry, Sorry. That. that's okay. Uh, sim yeah, sample event layout. Um, so what can the evening look like? I mean, you can do this on a Saturday day, Sunday day. You can do it in the evening. Um, if you're doing the evening, I recommend having everything set up starting at 4 o'clock, having food prep station set up, so just tables with tablecloths and your cutting boards out. Um, people arrive around five, they tend to trickle in. Um, so we just give a kind of a brief introduction. Welcome everybody, let's get cooking. And so everybody goes and finds a cutting board and starts cutting. Sometimes they need a little bit of encouragement. They might need to know where to go in terms of what needs to be done. So just a little bit of directions helpful. And then everybody prepares for about anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. And then while things are still cooking, like the soup, you can have an introduction from the librarian and then introduce the guest farmer and the farmer can show a slideshow on the farm or talk about the farm a little bit and then everybody eats somewhere around 6.20 to 7 o'clock and then some cleanup. Um, so that's just a suggestion of how an event can look. And then what? Uh, there's a tool in the, yep, um, that's it. Um, so, the one last suggestion is to use signupgenius.com, and in there you can put in how many um, peppers you need, how many potatoes, and then people can sign up for it, um, which is really helpful so that the library doesn't have to worry about procuring those ingredients. Um, next slide, please. Sorry. It's okay. Here we go. 
So just some sample menus for the different seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. You can change it up a little bit, but all really simple things that you can have everybody bring. And I one key suggestion is have everybody bring everything washed so you don't have to wash there. And so we put that in the simple, um, in the Genius sign up. Next page, please. And there's just a link right here on this to the sign up Genius. You don't have to link to it, that's all right. And next slide. Um, and so we have Amy, I believe, on Skype, hopefully, who has been a part of two different simple suppers that we've done at the Kimball Library. And she just has a few words to share about why she participated in a simple supper and how it worked for their library. Welcome, Amy. Hold on, we're working on unmuting you. Hang on one second. Maybe do you we right click on the just the box? Yeah, Interesting. Pick her out. Um, that won't help. We're trying to unmute you, Amy. Sorry about this. Let's see. Do we have? Um, okay. I'll check it here. Let's see. Um, a couple people who aren't muted yet. Yeah, right. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Maybe if she's oh. calling from a phone, it's. Is she muted on? Uh, Amy, might you be muted on your end, possibly? You're on a phone, so that doesn't make a huge amount of sense. But. It's not giving me the option of unmuting you. Um, let's see. Maybe hang up and click that. That. Um, oh, that might be a good idea. Yeah, Amy, would you mind? I'm sorry. Uh, if you could um, hang up and then call back, maybe we can see if we can get you back so you're audible. You want to mute the other two guests? Yeah. Okay, she's gonna come back. Amy will be with us in just a minute. Do you want to, um, anything that you want to say about? So that, one of the things I suggest. Find, how do they find a farmer? How do you find a farmer? Good already. question. So we at NOFA, nofavt.org, has a directory of farmers, and you can search by county and by town. Um, and so you can find farmers that way. If you're having a hard time finding a local farmer, you can email me and say, I'm in Dorset, I need a farmer, and I can help make a connection. We have the Hi, Vermont. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want me to wait? Because I can hold off. No, why don't, yeah, why don't you jump in? OK, all right. So um, this is Amy. I'm the director of Kimball Public Library in Randolph. Um, I was thrilled when Missy offered us the opportunity to do these simple suppers, and um, I love to, to hear Abby talk about the triple bottom line. For those of us who were at the Association for Rural and Small Libraries and heard Rebecca Smith Aldrich there or at a recent Vermont Library Association conference, that is really familiar. And for me, doing a simple, simple supper hits on all of the things that she talked about that we do things that are economically feasible, that are socially equitable, and that are good for the environment. So this was perfect as far as I was concerned to have this opportunity. Um, it was super easy to pull off, I think mostly because Missy did the heavy lifting. Um, even without Missy doing the heavy lifting of you know, bringing the cutting boards and all of that, I, you know, to me, this is not a big, scary um, program to put on. I think it'll be quite simple. And I love the idea of um, inviting people to bring cutting boards and knives and all of the things that you need to, to um, carry it off. Um, I will also say that at Kimball, we're attempting to cut back on how much disposable um, flatware and paper plates and stuff like that that we use and it has become quite acceptable to ask people to bring their own plates, flatware, beverage glasses and so I, I think that would be a fine way to go. Um, one of the things that we did at uh, this summer's Simple Supper was to try to link events. So June's full moon is the strawberry moon. Um, we also um, 
you know, Strawberry Moon, Strawberry Shortcake for the Simple Supper. Um, with the theme of the summer reading program being space, um, we also had a screening of Chasing the Moon from American Experience while we had a, a screening of their preview. So all of those things tied together. The sad thing is, and you might have guessed that from the down coats that people were wearing that evening, is it was <laughs> overcast and cold. So um, although we borrowed a telescope uh, from the Cutler Library in Plainfield, we weren't able to deploy it. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, on the other hand, um, people came out for different parts of the event and ended up cross-pollinating, which was great. Um, two hot tips. One is that some kids like to participate in the, in the meal prep and some don't. Um, so this time around, we had a um, table set up with simple crafts that the kids could play with if they wanted to. We had Legos set up so that there was something to keep them occupied. Um, and the other hot tip is that if you decide to go with the strawberry shortcake for dessert, which is delicious, by the way, um, just call on me and I'm happy to share the recipe for a sheet pan version of the biscuits because otherwise what a pain in the neck. Um, and last but not least, and then I'll get off of here, um, I got really nervous, less so the second time than the first time, but the, as we're coming up to the date of the event, I'm thinking nobody is signing up to bring ingredients. What are we going to do? Um, I encourage folks um, to go ahead and live with that discomfort. It turns out that, at least in my community, people were signing up two days, one day before or the day of to bring mm -hmm. ingredients. So it worked out fine. It worked out fine. So that, that's my contribution to this. I do it. It's a great event. It's wonderful. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Great, so I think now we questions? can yeah, open does, it up to questions. Does anyone have any questions? Josh will, Josh will successfully, we hope, unmute anyone who has a question. Um, how do they indicate? I see. Is it up? I'm gonna just, um, also, if you have a question, you can put it in the chat box. Um, which is that little on the bottom left of your screen, that little thing right there. Um, you can, it looks like a little talking bubble. You can put your question in the chat and we'll, um, can address you that way. Any questions? So we'll be sending out um, information on the listserv, for example, the posters, and um, potentially we'll have the recording of this webinar and everything up on the Department of Libraries website, and we'll link to the NOFA website as well. Um, contact Missy and Abby if you have any questions that you think of after the fact. And I'm going to try and work with them to make a sort of communication or marketing kit for this event if you'd like to hold one at your library so it's a little bit easier for you. We'll have all that verbiage. Um, last call. Okay, it doesn't seem like we have any questions at the moment. Uh, do you have, ladies have anything else you'd like to No, I just encourage everybody to try it and reach out with any questions. Email's really good for me, and I typically respond pretty quickly. Um, you mentioned, um, Jennifer, that uh, the Department of Libraries is working with Rooted in Vermont mm -hmm. around, can you... Sure, that's sure. so you could do a simple supper around that. Sure, you could um, since so the simple suppers program does not have to be held during agricultural literacy week in November. You can hold it before, you can hold it after, and I think most of you know that um, Laura has been working with Rooted in Vermont to bring that program into libraries, which is teaching community members how to find food in their own backyard, whether that's foraging. Um, in the forest, or fishing, or hunting, what have you. So it could be you uh, work with Rooted in Vermont, have some sort of foraging program, um, or items you forage 
potentially could have forage prepared um, under the table. You work with them and then you host a simple supper event um, and work with NOFA Vermont and MISTI. So there's a lot of opportunity this fall for you to kill two birds with one stone, for lack of a better expression, <laughs> and work with uh, many organizations at once and reach the most possible people you can. I know that Rooted in Vermont often brings in folks that don't usually use the library and Aglet Week events um, are usually the same, yeah. especially if you're reaching out to farmers. Um, that's something you should do for uh, Root in Vermont Week as well. So something to consider. Um, Other yeah. than that, we're going to try, <laughs> Josh is going to try and share uh, Abby and Missy's contact information. Um, God forbid you use it, lose it. You can just email me and I will put you in contact you with them. And yep, that's it. And here's a new phrase for you. Feeding um, a bird with two seeds. Feeding a bird with two seeds. So that's the new expression. It's just better. <laughs> much better. Much better. So you can feed a bird with two seeds. And we'll, we'll keep everybody posted. I'm ex really excited to see what you guys do with this. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining.